preference and Jesus fucking Christ, I can't believe this fucking nonsense. This is why I hate RFK. This is why I said I hate fucking Kennedys. This is why I said I hate fucking people who think that they're royalty in America because we don't fucking have that. But anyways, I'm fuck. Yes, obviously I'm fucking hot about it because fuck this guy and fuck all the fuck everybody at this point. <clears throat> I will say this. If you want to hear more of what we do, go to GameRageMagazine.com. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine. Twitter slash X at GameRageMag. You can also go to YouTube, 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 Game Rage Magazine. If you like anime, go follow Frank at anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast. I can just mute it if you want. Okay. Well, you're getting up, so what? I'm going to keep it. Oh, yeah, I'll just mute it. Anyways. Uh, go to the Anime Syndicate Podcast. You can also go to... All Gas No Trash official, and you can follow Adam there and go listen to All Gas No Trash podcast. All right. So, RFK Jr., I, I can't even say he dropped out because he didn't even drop out, man. What kind of fucking bullshit is this? This is the most fucking ridiculous thing I've ever fucking heard of. Now, I think before when Trump made this phone call with him, with, with RFK Jr. It's like this thing on the phone, like, oh, we're going to do this together or some bullshit. I think that phone call was Trump saying like, hey man, you're fucking old like I am. I'm 80 fucking years old. You're 70 years old. People are talking shit about Biden being an old fuck. So essentially we can't, that's a bad look if I have you run as my vice president, which I thought if they wanted to defeat any fucking competitor, having RFK Jr. would have been a smart move to put on the ballot with Trump as his vice president. That would have been a, that would have guaranteed victory. Now, because they didn't do that, victory is is obviously not guaranteed in any way. But to have RFK Jr. Talk all this shit about being this fucking candidate for the people and doing all this shit. And then for him to come out and do this press conference where he basically says, hey, guys, I'm not I'm not ending the campaign. You know what I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to suspend my activities of campaign. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my name on the ballot in every state that is a, a for sure red or a for sure blue state. I will take my name off of the swing state ballots. Because if it was a swing state, I would basically hand the election to a Democrat, which I don't think is actually true. But... What he, by him saying that, it's just, it's just fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I feel like this move was very premeditated, obviously. And when, when I had heard this, I said, oh, you know what they're doing? Basically, Trump said after uh, they're, they're basically going to fucking have RFK Jr. on the cabinet, right? Could be I like think Secretary they, of State or some shit. I don't know what they're going to give him, but something. And I don't know what the plan would be for him as to what position it would be. But I do think that this was planned previously. And now. You can't eat cheese. No, they can't have dairy. Yeah. Or they shouldn't have dairy, I should say. <laughs> And now, essentially, this is going to be some kind of way how Trump thinks he... Because not only did he do this, but then he came out and he endorsed fucking Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Which is just like, what a fucking cuck move, man. Like, listen, I didn't like RFK Jr. And I'll, I'll tell you, the reason I didn't like him is because I don't like your fucking name. I don't like political dynasties. I don't like that. I think that's fucking the problem. I think that's the problem, the main problem with our system that we have. I think that's where we went astray. Um, as we are basically sitting now, it's it's just, it's it's oligarchy, right? It's whoever has more money in a, can, a presidential race or any race, candidate or any political race, whoever has the most money is going to win. That's just the bottom line. 
So, it, we're essentially being run by oligarchs in the House, the Senate, the whole executive branch. Even the judicial branch is fucking rich ass motherfuckers. So, I fucking, I hate to see a, well, someone who was kind of considered a viable third party candidate mm -hmm. because all he had to do was just take enough fucking electoral votes mm -hmm. so neither of them could have hit 270. Right. Because if he would have done that, it would have gone to a, I forget what it's called. Runoff? No, not a runoff. It's a, uh, God damn it. Now I have to Google it because I don't want to fucking be wrong. Uh, when a president, I, I think it's called government. a contingent election. When a candidate, when no candidate gets 270. If no candidate receives the a majority of electoral votes, the presidential election leaves the electoral co process electoral college process and moves to Congress. The House of Representatives elects the president from three presidential candidates who received the most electoral votes. So it would have been them, the Kamala, it would have been Trump, and it would have been Kennedy. Okay, yeah. And in that situation, what essentially would happen is there would be deals going on. There would be deals going on with saying, hey, we'll make this guy whatever. Now, you got the Democrats and you got the Republicans, right? Mm -hmm. But what would end up fucking happening is the Republicans would basically only want to would take the Republicans. RFK would have been the only candidate who likely would have said, oh, I'll put people from both sides of the aisle in mm -hmm. to get the votes necessary to, um, to do that. And so it's the House of Representatives that it would go to. And essentially, each state delegation gets one vote. Hmm. And you need 26 to win. So it's whoever gets 20 fucking six votes. And then the senators would also elect. So the Senate would then elect the vice president with each senator having one vote. And you need 51 votes to win. But what's funny if is the current sitting vice president would be the tiebreaker vote, <laughs> right? Because that's who's the president of the Senate and only votes if there is a tie. Mm -hmm. So it's very, and, and then the, uh, it would, the senators are limited to the top two candidates if their vote in, in, for the vice president. So it would be the top two vice presidents. It would be Vance and Waltz. Those would be the two that could be up for that. It wouldn't be RFK's vice president pick. Um, basically, <sighs> when you have that issue, mm hmm and that and, and now it's historically has happened before. Mm -hmm. Um when? Uh, that's what I was finding out exactly. Contingent elections. Uh, contingent election of the president. Okay. So this has happened. Now this is a power that's delegated under, I believe it's the Twelfth Amendment. Yeah, it was modified by the Twelfth Amendment in 1804, which the House chooses one of the three candidates who received the most electoral votes, while the Senate chooses one of the two candidates who received the most electoral votes for vice president. Um, so basically, what ends up happening is the presidential election, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the 1800 presidential election was a contingent election. It was Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr for the Democratic Republican Thomas ticket. Jefferson sucker. Thomas Jefferson sucker. Going against the Federalist Party ticket of John Adams and Charles. Pinkney. So <laughs> John Adams was the second president, right? For wait, yeah, second president. Yeah, because yeah, um, because the whole Barbary States fiasco was under him, right? Um, no, he could he um, it happened under George Washington, uh -huh. and George Washington got pissed, and him and Andrew Jackson commissioned they he. George Washington just straight up went up to Congress. Hey, you're passing this bill. We're getting a navy. I'm done with these fucking pirates. Yeah. And then they're all cool. Cool. We'll do what you say, King George. Because at this point, they didn't know if he was going to be like that. Yeah. And they did. But then George Washington like says, hey, no. 
This position of power has to be transferred. It cannot be kept with one person. So I will step down as president now. And Andrew, not Andrew Jackson, what's his name? Um, uh, John Adams. John Adams won. And Andrew Jackson was his vice president. Mm. And then Andrew Jackson, or uh, Adams is like, okay, we have this <sighs> fucking Navy. I'm not going to send him out. I'm instead just going to keep paying the pirates to leave us alone. Yeah. Andrew Jackson says, you're a bitch, and I'm running against you. <laughs> Yeah, so basically it's happened three times in history. It happened in the 1800 election, Mm -hmm. and then it basically took 35 ballot votes. It took 35 rounds of voting, well, technically 36 rounds of voting Mm -hmm. to get a winner. And basically, um, after 36 rounds of voting, they finally selected Jefferson. Um... And then this is what made them make the 12th Amendment, was that situation. Mm -hmm. So then in 1824, it happened again, where you had uh, Democrat-Republican candidates. You had Andrew Jackson, John Adams, William H. Crawford, and Henry Clay. John Adams was still trying to become president? Yeah, 24 years fucking later. Um, So then you had Andrew Jackson receiving more electoral and popular votes than any other candidate. He did not receive the majority of the 131 electoral votes needed to win at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was a contingent election. So vice presidential candidate John Calhoun defeated his rivals as the support of both Adams and Jackson camp gave him an unassailable lead over the other candidates. So, okay, basically, the top three candidates in the electoral vote were Jackson, Adams, and Crawford. Those were the three guys that got to go in. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Speaker of the House... What, the guy who was the Speaker of the House, which was Clay, he was eliminated because he got the fourth most mm-hmm. electoral votes. So they only took the top three. So he got eliminated. Um, wait, what was his name? Uh, John, wait, uh, Henry Clay. That was uh, Cassius Clay's brother. Oh, yeah, Henry Clay Sr. Yeah, that was uh, Cassius Clay's brother who actually got him off from that mayhem charge. Mm. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, basically... Wait, that- what year was that? 1824. When was the Civil War? 1870-something, 1860. How many years that? later is that? Uh, like 30 or 40. That doesn't make sense. They, they, it can't be him because... Maybe it's not him then. Henry uh, Cassius Clay did. He was 50 years old when the Civil War ended. Mm. So unless he was 20 years old when... Oh, maybe. It could have been. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So basically, like this ups, like the upset happened. Like Adams actually won this election. Hmm. So then, in 1837, so he became president twice. Yeah, it was Martin Van Buren and Rick and his uh, running mate Richard Johnson. They won the popular vote, but Virginia's 23 electors became faithless electors and didn't vote for him hmm. at the, when they came to the electoral college. So he's one vote short of the fucking majority, which a contingent election happened, and they had to decide between Johnson and Francis Granger, and Johnson won, Johnson won easily on the first ballot from 33 to 16, from 33 to 16. So that were the three, those were the three times that it happened. Contingent election. It hasn't happened obviously since 18 fucking 37. I mean, after the Civil War, I think the Democrats and Republicans kind of got cemented. Yeah, right, basically. Which is weird since the Democrats were traitors. Yeah, so (laughs) that's true. But what's funny is, like, here we are in 2024 facing, I mean, as unrealistic as it may be, possibly still because he left his fucking name on some of the fucking ballots. ballots. So, like, if... If, if a state that's normally red or normally blue decides to say fuck off, because there are some states where you can, you get a percentage of the, of the if you only get a percentage of the vote, you can still get electoral uh, votes, votes yeah. electoral college votes. Um, so like if he leaves his name on those states and really all he has to do is receive, I think, 5% of the popular vote as a third party candidate. And then that third party basically gets full funding, the same funding from the government and the same yeah. everything as the the two big parties. Yeah, but we all know that's not where the big money's at. No, it's not, but what it, what it could lead to is in 2028, there being that third party getting the full same uh, Support, limelight yeah. as the Democrats and the Republicans, which could happen. I don't know how likely that is, 
But I mean, listen, goddamn, it would be crazy as hell if this turned into a contingent fucking election. And again, what would happen with Kamala Harris being the tie-breaking vote in the Senate? Now, granted, it's for the vice presidential seat, Mm -hmm. but if she were the tie-breaking vote there... She put Waltz in there. She put Waltz in there. And then what if we had Trump win and then Waltz be the vice fucking president? Trump would be shot. That would be insane. Again. Again, yeah. That would be crazy as hell. And I'm not ruling that out for the pure and simple fact that for the last fucking seemingly 15 years, maybe even 17 years, we've just been living through one fucking once in a lifetime event after another. Ever since that damn monkey. That goddamn monkey. Was it, no, it no, actually it was before that. The financial crisis was uh, the first thing that, that well, no, 9-11, we, we, 9/11 we really was the first fucking thing. No, we all agree that our crisis event is Harambe. No, I definitely don't agree with that. See, that didn't yeah. happen until 2016. We were already having fucked up shit happen. Yeah, but not, not to the point after Harambe's death. Oh, so what you're saying is Harambe fucking sealed the deal. Yeah. Well, it cemented you, us in this fucked up timeline. Have you watched Loki? Uh, yeah, I've seen some. Was that the Nexus event or some shit like that? Uh-huh. That was our Nexus event? Was yeah. The thing that solidified the timeline? No, this, no, it's the opposite. Uh-huh. It's a Nexus event is something that has to happen for a universe to survive. Uh-huh. If something happens to that Nexus event or whatever it's called, the, the, dimension, the dimension slowly starts to disintegrate. Oh, uh, okay. And Harambe was supposed to live. was our Nexus point. Oh, so point. since he died, now our dimension is fucking crashing. It's crumbling, yes. It's crumbling. Jesus Christ. That's insane. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, I didn't support RFK Jr. anyways. Is it weird that RFK being the candidate and all that and his initials sound like a gun? RFK? Uh. <laughs> oh, like a RFK fucking 37 or some shit? <laughs> I was thinking like something like the RPK. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. But, I mean, to be fair, though, if any political family would have to have a problem with guns... It'd be the Kennedys. (laughs) Yeah, of course it would. So, I fucking don't... I, I, this is, this is, this is fucking, this is disgusting. I hate this shit. This is terrible. Our political landscape is just fucked, man. It's just fucked. We need to go back to fucking the way it was. Pre-lobbying. But anyways, um... All right, well, that's my rant about RFK and that stuff. But anyways, what else? You got anything else to add? No. No? All right, cool. We'll uh, we'll cut this, make this a short one. Anyways, all right, that'll do it for us. Go to GameRageMagazine.com. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine. Twitter slash X, GameRageMag. YouTube, GameRageMagazine. Also, go to All Gas, No Trash Official. You can follow Adam. And also then go to uh, anime, Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast for Frank and go listen to the Anime Syndicate Podcast. All right, that'll do it for us. Uh, Fuck, I mean, if we live through the next week, we'll fucking catch you on the next one. (laughs) Which, uh, actually, the next one we're going to do will come out Monday, and I think uh, probably me and Adam are going to do the DNC because I think Adam watched most of it, too. So we'll do that on uh, on Sunday. So you guys will be able to hear us talk shit about the four days of the DNC. uh, And then that's that. So anyways, all right, we'll catch you guys on the next one.